is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Minister promised to crack the seats for sale scam, but his higher education minister says it's none of his business. Will Karana's promise ring you hollow? That's the ACT. You should ask the ACT. Daring to loot from the heart of the city, a house in Alwar Pet is burgled of jewelry and cash. The crime graph in the city is steadily on the rise. Not ready to spare any, looks like Jal Lalita is getting her act together. After Coimbatore, it's now destination Trichy and Chennai. 33 schools make their way into the blacklist for excess fees, the culprit, the landmark Right to Education Act and the right loopholes in it. Education Act 2009 has been drafted and passed with the sole intention of promoting privatization. And the Sri Lankans are in a commanding position after India slumped deeper into trouble on the fourth day of the first test at court. Welcome to News Tonight on NDTV Hindu. I'm Evelyn Matthew. It's 9 o'clock and there's plenty making the news tonight nationally as well. These are those top stories. Flinging slippers, box, just about anything that comes their way and still smiling about it, the hooligan politicians of Bihar continue their attacks in the assembly. <laughs> An RTI activist shot dead at a high court campus in Gujarat. His father accuses a BJP MP and his family of a deep conspiracy. Two and a half hours late is too late. The Home Minister says the response after the Bengal train tragedy was at snail's pace. Gap in the mobility of the disaster team. The women's hockey coach says the sexual harassment charges against him are a conspiracy. He quits his post after meeting Hockey India officials. The media may expose scams, people may get outraged, but our system just does not shy away from passing the buck. And this time, looks like the Higher Education Minister of Tamil Nadu, Punmudi, is proving this. Just three days after Chief Minister Karunanidhi promised that a committee will look into the activities of touts who are fleecing innocent students after NDTV Hindu reported the same, things don't seem to be too bright. NDTV Hindu's shocking expose. Touts selling off seats in prime engineering colleges for as much as 18 lakh rupees. All caught on NDTV Hindu's camera. The report was aired on the 18th of July. 18 lakh cap this 18 lakh Swana University. Campus. A day later, the chief minister reacted to the report. Karunanadi gave an assurance that a committee would be formed to take action against these touts. But today, the man in charge of the higher education ministry has passed the buck. The irony, the minister himself seems to indicate that action against touts may end up being caught in red tapism. A lot of people are trying to get admission to the college using these private touts. Sir, are you all uh, taking any action against those colleges mentioned, sir? You should ask the AICT. Yes. The chairperson of AICTE Southern Region and the vice chancellor of Anna University, Mannar Jawahar, says only a complaint from a student can initiate any action. But legal experts say there is a lot the state government can do. State will have to take a little step forward and take on the responsibility and ensure that such colleges do not exist at all. You see, the state also has powers to uh, enact laws and take over these universities or colleges itself which are erring so it's not as if the state is powerless state has the power but I don't think they have the mind to do it or the willpower to do it this past week has seen the shameless commodification of education in Tamil Nadu at stake is the credibility of this man to live up to his word and ensure that those who trap unsuspecting students are put behind bars bureau report NDTV Hindu well, the DGP has got a copy of the report and has ordered a preliminary investigation. But little can the department do without support from the minister in charge of higher education itself. 
Now, in connection with uh, the massive burglary that shook Alwar Pet residence yesterday, the police have detained six people, including a driver who was on the run for questioning. Gold and diamond jewelry worth 250 sovereigns and 6 lakh rupees in cash were burgled from the house of a popular transport firm owner. But our crime reporter Salim has got his hands on some statistics that say that this is just another instance of the increasing burglaries in the state. The man who rents the transport firm Bharati Roadways was not in when a group of robbers raided his home in Alwar Pet. They fled with 250 sovereigns of high-value diamond-studded jewellery and about 6 lakh rupees. Sniffer dogs and forensic detectives were quickly at the scene. They have broken the locks. They have, I feel a known suspect only could have done it. Though police say they have detained six suspects already for questioning, this latest incident clearly shows Tamil Nadu's crime graph is rapidly climbing. The state recorded 3,300 burglary cases in the year 2006. It climbed to 3,317 in 2007. It did not stop there. In 2008, it went further up to 3,849. The state's crime graph hit an alarming level in 2009 with over 4,000 cases of thefts. Police are telling residents in upmarket areas to take preventive measures such as electronic surveillance of their homes, offices and properties, which act as a deterrent. Uh, that will be good for the security of the house as well as it will be uh, useful for the investigation also. And once it is erected, the criminals also will uh, wean away from the area. Police also say regular patrolling by their personnel should be backed by private guards, especially during the nights. In Chennai, Salim for NDTV Hindu. On the latest development in the case of the murder of three-year-old Aditya, the police have remanded the 26-year-old woman, Poo Varasai, to 15 days of judicial custody. She was arrested on charges of murdering him and packing him into a suitcase. The police say it was all about uh, an illicit affair between the child's father and the woman that ultimately turned sar that cost the family their child's life. Our crime reporter Salim now joins us uh, live from our newsrooms for the latest in the story. Salim, there was clearly a lot of people in the city who wanted to see that face behind the murder. And that was perhaps the large crowd there outside the courts today. Take us through what really happened at the courts today. Initially, the police planned to produce her at the Georgetown court in Paris, but uh, the people were aware of it. Uh, when they came to know about the news uh, from the newspaper and also through the television media, they are uh, well aware and uh, they gathered at the Georgetown court to catch a glimpse of the 26-year-old murderer who murdered uh, the three-year-old Aditya and dumped the body in a suitcase and packed it uh, all the way to Nagapattinam. And uh, when, the, uh, when the police uh, saw the people uh, who had gathered there, so they planned to uh, change uh, uh, the destination and hence they produced uh, uh, this 26-year-old uh, criminal at the magistrate's house in Saidapet. There she was produced and uh, she was remanded under judicial custody for the next 15 days and lodged at the Pural prison. She should be on her way to the Pural prison now. All right. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Salim, for joining us with that update. On to some political gear up by the opposition. The General Secretary of the AIA DMK Jailalita today said she would lead a demonstration rally against the DMK at Trichy on the 24th of August. The rally would highlight the plight of Delta farmers, among other issues such as fishermen's livelihood and price rise. But the lady says she will not stop with just that. Jailalita is also scheduled to address the party cadres in Chennai on the 22nd of August. All this after Jailalita's public rally against the DMK regime in Coimbatore happened on the 13th of July that witnessed a massive turnout.
Now, death could be a very terrible thing, but there are rights attached to such a happening. The deceased have their rights too, and uh, the State Consumer C Commission held up those rights. In a recent judgment, the Commission ordered the Postal Life Insurance Department to pay 1 lakh rupees to the family of a bus driver who died at an accident. Peer Muhammad brings us this special report. One month after he started paying for his life insurance policy through salary deductions by his employer, Rajan Bosco, a bus driver, died in an accident. When his legal heirs wanted the insurance money after his death, the Postal Life Insurance Department refused to give it, saying the scheme was yet to come into effect. Bosco's family approached the consumer court for justice. He took the policy and a month later, after his uh, premium was deducted from the salary, he had died in a road traffic accident. Despite this death, the second month's premium also was deducted and it was intimated accordingly to the authorities and the authorities had intimated the LIC as per policy conditions but policy came into effect a bit later which deficiency made him approach the court. The district court ordered the Postal Life Insurance Department to pay the affected family 1 lakh rupees. But the department went on an appeal to the State Commission. The State Commission upheld the district court's verdict asking the department to pay the complainants promptly. Here is the postal authorities admit the fact that the complainant died a month after taking the policy and that the premium was deducted which was intimated to them. Nothing was controverted to the, to the other side or this was neither denied. That being the case, the forum's order was upheld by the State Commission. The State Commission's order against the Postal Life Insurance Department is a definite warning to the insurance firms, both public and private, that try to dodge the ordinary consumers. In Chennai with reporter P. Mohammed, Lokpriya, NDTV Hindu. Now, school education in Tamil Nadu has been tangled in various issues. The latest is the Govindarajan Committee recommending the de-recognition of eight schools found to have charged excess fees from students. The committee has also put 25 other schools on a blacklist. But interestingly, educationists are pointing out loopholes in the Right to Education Act and saying that this landmark act, which is promoting rampant privatization and profiteering. An act which was supposed to ensure free and compulsory education for all children, touted to be a landmark in Indian education. And just few months after the act is passed, here in Tamil Nadu, parents are fighting as private schools charge them excess fee. And a state committee asking for the de-recognition of eight such schools. Educationists are drawing parallels. It is just the beginning of the profiteering ushered in by the RTE Act. The Right to Education Act 2009 has been drafted and passed with the sole intention of promoting privatization. So indirectly it promotes the privatization. So what all happens in Tamil Nadu is in tune with the act that has been passed in the uh, August 2009 in the parliament. Activists allege that the act is a provision for private schools to mint money. For instance, Section 12 of the Act promises reimbursement of school fees to private schools for providing free education to poor children. An initial estimate says the figures could run into several thousand crores. The UP government has calculated how much money will they require to reimburse private schools and the amount is 3,300 crores, which will not go to government school improvement, it will go for private schools. Educationists are now demanding that the RTE be repelled altogether and a common school system and neighborhood schools be brought in. The 86th amendment which inserted article 21A on based on which uh, the right of children education act 2009 is passed must be rewritten. It should be withdrawn, a new act should replace. But with couple Sibyl making things easier for the private schools through further amendments, that looks like a bleak possibility. With Ramanathan, Bertila, NDTV Hindu. Now, coming up on the bulletin, the MLAs of Bihar release their full arsenal, shoes, tables and even pots. And sleaze and an ugly sex scandal hits Hockey India just before their very crucial tour.